So if you've ever been in a season of chaos, right? This video is for you. I'm going to be talking about how I am handling what I would call probably the most amount of chaos all at one time in my life right now. Um, and some of the things that you could do to handle the same. So this video is going to be the first one on my series of videos called The Journey. And I'm going to talk about it a little later, but welcome to the journey, y'all. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Inez. I am a life and travel coach. I help black women eliminate overwhelm, eliminate overthinking so they can get out of their head and get on these trips. So if that's something that you want to learn more about, make sure you stick around, you like and subscribe because I'll be bringing all of the heat on that. So let me tell you about this chaos. So in the last, I would say five to six weeks, I feel like everything that could change in my life is all changing all at once right and that can make you really feel like chaotic so it started with me being told by my manager that layoffs were coming and that i was going to be one of the people affected by the layoff right so i was laid off by my dream job basically i was laid off by my dream job um at the end of june in the midst of that, um, my husband and I are investing and rehabbing our very first investment property. And we found out after the, our GC went behind the walls that we have to redo the entire electric and we have to redo some sewage piping, which came up to a grand total of an additional $50,000 that we need in order to complete our project. Now this is $50,000 that we do not have today. Um, in addition to that, um, during the month of July, we were told that my daughter's daycare was closing. So I also had to figure out where are they going to be going for daycare during this time. The tip on top of the tip is the car that we've been driving around for pretty much, you know, our whole time together, um, is slowly deteriorating. And I feel like any day now it's going to be gone. So now we also have to figure out how to get a new car. Um, in addition to me trying to take advantage of, you know, at, during this time of unemployment, um, all of the benefits that thankfully the United States provides for people who are unemployed. But on top of that, I also was launching a trip um, called The Getaway for Moms that I was doing on Labor Day weekend um, in Chicago. And also just being a real estate and I mean, being a, um, a business owner, right? Being a travel coach putting out content, trying to keep my business running um, on top of just being a wife and a mom, right? So all of this within less than six weeks. To say the least, it's felt like really a season of chaos. And I have to tell you, like there have been a lot of times that I have cried, that I have just completely stopped moving, stopped taking action, like um, that I wanted to just give up, that I've been frustrated, that I've been mad. Um, you know, just trying to figure out what is going on, right? Like what is really going on? Um, I feel like I'm taking the right actions. I feel like I took the right actions and I don't feel like where I'm, where I am is where I want to be. And it feels like stuff is just all over the dang place. Um, and so there are some things that I have started to implement in my life in order to be able to handle this time. And I want to share this with you because this is going to be something that I am going to be sharing more of um, as I go on this journey. And the first thing that I want to share with you is that I am, and I don't know if y'all can see that, I am observing instead of reacting, right? And what that means is during this time, I have shifted from reacting. I've shifted from you know, and I will say I have shifted and I will say 80 to 85% of the time because sometimes I just be reacting, right? But 80 to 85% of the time, I am observing. And what that means is I have stepped outside of the mess and I'm looking from a new perspective. It makes me think about like if you're in quicksand or if you're drowning, if you're drowning in a pool or if you're sinking in quicksand and everything's feels like it's detrimental like there's no hope 
right? If you're in it, you can't see that there's a branch over there, right? If you're in it, you may not see that potentially the water isn't as deep as you think it is, right? You're just in the mess and the emotion and the feelings. So you can't see like what resources you have around you so that you can solve the problem. And so the reason why I'm shifting from um, acting and reacting to just observing, especially in the moments that seem hard, especially when another thing comes up and another thing comes up and another thing comes up, right? Is because I want to be approaching this solving of the problems from a real clear place um from a place that's elevated and not drowning right so that i can see what resources do i have what people do i have um what solutions are available um to me right and so it's it's it it's gotten to a point now where even if I do fall into reacting, it's very easy for me to like jump back in to observing, right? The other thing that I'm doing is shifting my identity. And what I want to do is, here's the, I love a post-it note, shifting my identity from employee to entrepreneur, right? So I have been an employee my entire life. Um, ever since I graduated from college, I have been an employee. That was 2005. Now I know I'm looking, but it's been a while. And so as I go into this journey of being a full-time entrepreneur, I really am like struggling. I have been struggling to wrap my mind around what it means to not work for somebody, to generate and create income on my own, from my own brain, um, from the value that I can create. So in order to shift my identity, these are some of the things I'm doing. And I wanted to kind of set you up so that you can see y'all don't mind my room. It ain't in the best shape, but um, let me just show. So one thing that I'm doing is I have written Inez 2.0. Y'all see, that's supposed to be me. <laughs> Inez 2.0. And basically, this is a list of the superpowers that I have, that I will have when I have hit the 2.0 version of myself, right? The full-time entrepreneur, businesswoman version of myself, right? It is the accomplishments that I will have had, right? When I hit my 2.0 self. It's the habits that I have daily when I am in that 2.0 self, right? And then it's the affirmations, the things that I believe about my world view um, when I've hit that place. So this is really wrapping around like my self view when I become the person I wanna be and my world view when I become the person I wanna be. Every day in the morning, first thing when I wake up, I'm reading this every night when i go to sleep i'm reading this right it's just a reminder to my conscious and my subconscious that this is the goal this is what we're going toward right the other thing that i'm doing is i'm finding evidence so this is what is helping me shift my identity so i have this little book and every day i write down at least one thing at least one thing that proves to me right that is proof that this person is showing up very soon that she's on the horizon that in some way she's already here right so i write down one thing right one thing that i've done one thing that i'm doing one person i met an opportunity that showed up that i took advantage of just so i can tell my subconscious and prove to my subconscious that this is who i am right not who even i'm becoming but it's who i am because i have proof of it today right so i wanted to show y'all those two things um, let me go back into my office. Another thing, it's kind of bright here, y'all. Another thing that I am doing, um, in order to really become, you know, and really just be able to manage and handle this hard season of chaos is I am focusing on moving the needle, right? So I told y'all all the things that I'm having to do right now, all of the problems that I'm solving, let's just say. All of the problems that I'm solving. Hold on, let me get this set up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Child, the struggles, the struggles. <laughs> all the problems that I'm solving. And with all of them, there's a million things to do, right? Like there's a million things to do. There's a million things to get done. Um, and so what I have had to do is constrain. And this is something that is really important 
for women who are doing the most, but specifically moms, because we have a lot on our plate. We have whole people that we're taking care of, and there's always some more to do, right? There's, there is no end to the to-do list when you are a mother, right? I have two daughters. They are three and one. They will be two and four very soon, right? Next month. So what I have done is I have started writing a to-do list. And the most I can put on the to-do list is five items. And really, I try to stick to three. Because in the day, I don't want to know what do I need to get done. I want to know what can I do that is going to move the needle today, right? On all of the things, the, the things that are going to move the needle the most, make the biggest difference in what I'm trying to complete, right? So you'll see here what will move the needle, right? That's what I'm asking myself every day. I'm not just writing a to-do list anymore and checking off the things. I'm not even, I used to write what will make you happy, uh, what will make me happy today and what am I responsible for today, right? I don't even want to, I don't want to know what I'm responsible for. I want to know what is going to make a difference. What is going to make the change, right? Because this is a season of chaos and I need change, right? So that's something that I'm focusing on as well. The other thing that I'm doing is I am trusting my instincts, trusting my instincts, right? This is hard because what I realized was my, I'm a very heady person. I'm always in thought. I'm always strategizing. Um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm a lot of a perfectionist. <laughs> and so like, even when my heart tells me to do something, my brain will stop me and say, well, how are we going to do it? How are we going to strategize and do it? What's the process? And how are you going to plan it out? And what when is going to fit on your schedule? It does all of that, right? And so what I have started doing is really just listening from a place of knowing that even in this season of chaos, even during this time where I don't know all the answers. Like, I don't know how we're going to get this money for our property. I don't know how we're going to afford to have a new car. I don't know what it's like to have ever been on unemployment, right? I don't know any of these things. Like, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get to where I want to get in my business, right? I don't know, like, how long it's going to take necessarily for us to really complete our property because I feel like every single time we be on the end of it, here comes something else, right? So there's a lot of things I don't know, but what I am saying is I believe that I'm being guided. I believe that all of this stuff is happening at the same time for a reason. It's not a coincidence. And I can look back over my life and really see how there's, even the things I thought were coincidences, I see they're not coincidences. And I'll give you an example. So I've been learning a lot about identity, which I told you how to shift my identity because I realized that taking action from a place of disbelief in your ability to do things and get things doesn't matter because you have to actually believe that's who you are. And I know that because I tell my clients that, but sometimes you have to, it's harder to coach yourself than it is to coach your clients, right? And so I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's also a YouTube creator and she does tarot readings. And in the tarot reading she did for me, right, um, for Torians in the month of August, basically I've never had a tarot reading, but it has confirmed, it confirmed everything up until this point. And this is why I say at this point, I'm no longer um, allowing my head to run the show. I'm allowing my heart and my instincts to run the show because I'm being guided by my ancestors, by the Lord, you know, by my inner knowing, I'm being guided. And so I've really started to just trust, trust, trust that I'm being guided, right? And know that I'm being guided. And the steps that I'm taking, the things that are being placed on my spirit to do are the path. I don't have to build the path. It's being given to me. As long as I'm in position, I just have to get in position. Right. I just have to get my identity together. I just have to be in tune. I have to be aware. I have to be paying attention. Right. And I have to listen. That's the path. I don't have to make the path. And so if you're someone who's always trying to make the path like me, who always got a plan like me, I will say, like, allow your path to come as you're told. That's what this what will move the needle is. What can move the needle don't have nothing to do with what I 
think I should be doing with the plan that I'm making. It has to do with me asking the question and waiting to receive the answer and listening to what my inside says, right? That's what that is. So I'm really leaning into that because I'm like, even if the action I take doesn't give me the result I take, I want, it doesn't give me what I want. So for instance, like, you know, right now we are working on getting business funding for our property, right? So we need $50,000 in loans. We're working on doing, getting business funding. So we're working on increasing our credit score for the month of August so we can get some business funding. The things that we're doing to increase our credit score, they may or may not work. They may not, right? But I know that that's what my inner self told me to do. And then it will tell me to do something else if it doesn't work. It's okay. It's still a part of my journey, right? This is about my journey. So, so yeah, that's one of the things that I'm doing as well. And the last thing is about this video. Practicing in public, right? And you see at the bottom it says unscripted. So I have always been a performer. I have danced, tap, jazz, ballet, lyrical clogging all my life, right? I have spoken all my life. And so I have performed a lot of my life. And what I'm realizing is this is not a season of performance alone. There will be some performance, but this is a season of practicing, not just performing in public, but practicing in public. And that is what this video is about, right? This is an unscripted video. I didn't plan for this other than my little sticky notes. I usually have a whole script, y'all. But what I realized was that my scripts sometimes are hindering me from trusting my instincts. So that's what I'm doing for this video. I'm trusting my instincts. I'm gonna be sharing a lot more of just my journey, unscripted, right? And I wanna share more of what I'm learning in the process while I'm learning it, while it's hard, while it's difficult, as opposed to at the end, like most people do when they've had it all figured out. That's what has been blocking me. I've been trying to share when I had it all figured out. I don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have it all figured out. Just share, just tell people what you know. And this is what I know today. The things that I've shared on this video is what I know today, right? And I plan to share a lot more of that just off the top of my head <laughs> so yeah that's what i wanted to share today if you're in a season of chaos um use these things they're very very helpful i found them to be very very helpful in my journey um and helping to bring me clarity but also helping to bring me peace of mind and that's something you cannot pay for and it's really not something that somebody else can really give you you have to give it to yourself because if you allow the hands and the deck and the control to be in somebody else's hands it will always be in somebody else's hands so i'm choosing to take it into my hands during this time and i suggest that you do the same so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you want to hear more about this journey honey subscribe because i'm gonna be here so if you here i'm here um <laughs> drop me a comment right drop me a comment and let me know which of the things that i'm doing you are going to start doing right not you're going to try to start doing that you are going to start doing because they are going to be helpful for you if you're in any type of uh, any type of chaos okay um if you're someone who is trying to figure out how to make travel a reality trying to Make your travel dreams a reality. Listen, I didn't even tell y'all about the trip I'm trying to get done and during this time. Uh, my best friend is going to Bali for her 40th birthday. This is the season of 40. Everybody in my circle, all my friends are hitting the fourth floor. We on the fourth floor, right? And she, we going to Bali. She going to Bali in September. And guess what? I'm going to Bali in September. Now, how I'm going, I don't know yet. I don't know. Even as a travel coach, I don't know. And I'm feeling all of the feelings because I have all of this chaos going on in my life. But I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to tell y'all how I figured it out. And then I'm going to show y'all when, when I'm in Bali in September. Okay? So, that's an additional thing that's going on. So, I just hope y'all stick around. If you're someone who's trying to create trips for yourself, there's trips you want to go on in the midst of your chaos. Right? You got a lot of stuff going on. But there's somewhere that is calling you. There's a destination that is calling you. 
I'm someone who believes that if it's calling you, it's meant to be. Where you're meant to go in the world is tied to who you're meant to be. And I've seen it in my life over and over and over again for the 22 countries I've been to. So if that's you, click the link in the description, schedule a call with me so we can talk about, you know, where you want to go, what's blocking you, what's stopping you, and how we can potentially work together to remove those blockers and get you on the trips you want to take. Thank you for joining me.